So here we've got the game set up, ready to play. Um, the I placed all the allies in their different uh, beach entry uh, points and uh, placed all the German units as well on the board. There are a sizable number of reinforcements for both sides, as you would expect. There are 10 turns in total here on the turn track. Uh, I will be playing, as I said, I'm going to play the game solo. I'm not going to gain for the victory points too much. I'm really just interested in playing through the game, playing through the Normandy campaign. One of the things I do like about this uh, game uh, based on Normandy is that, uh, let me find it, yeah, there's Mortan. So Mortan is just off the bottom of the map. Um, you don't have um, Cherbourg necessarily on the map, it's abstracted, but you do get to be able to play all the way down to um, Mortan, which is just sort of, if I just point my tweezers, it's just about there, just slightly off camera. I'll move the camera about as we play through the turns, etc. It is a single map game, so the footprint is not, uh, not too excessive. Um, it will take from memory. It's definitely a few evenings of play, and I'll play at a fairly leisurely, um, relaxed manner. I would describe my solo play. Um, when I'm playing war games, how I play my solo games. Um, I'm going to try and get... I will push for the victory points for the allies that make sense to me. So Cherbourg, for example, um, I believe there's a victory point there. Uh, and then, of course, Khan itself. I remember last time I played, I wasn't able hardly to get any victory points for Khan. Um, and I felt like, well, you know, oh, no, I've done a really bad job. Um, I'm not going to worry about that too much in this playthrough. I'm just going to play through the game and enjoy the experience of playing through the Normandy campaign. I will just double check all the setup before I start, but I think everything's looking ship shape. Um, the one advantage this game has for playing uh, solo is that it is a chit pull game. One of the reasons, um, one of the reasons, I like it for a lot of reasons, but um, it's one of the things I do like about this game, um, which makes it very, uh, very welcoming for, for, for playing um, solo. So what I'll do, I'll go through, as I always do with my AARs, I'll play through parts of a turn or a complete turn, talk about how the game is progressing, sort of talk about some of the some of the key mechanics, how I'm finding the game. Um, so no further ado, we'll start, uh, we'll make a start. At the end of the first turn, we've been through all the activations and all the chip pull activations as well. And uh, how we're looking, so all the Americans were able to get off the beaches um, with no casualties in terms of their stacks. Uh, not surprisingly, Omaha was the hardest one to to crack, um, but with the help of the second uh, wave, they were able to do so, and they've been able to move inland, coming off from those beaches. So all the be all the American beaches are open. Uh, the Americans have also been able to make some good progress towards Cherbourg. Uh, I wasn't able to move any of the counters into Cherbourg in the first turn. I probably could have, maybe, if I'd have sort of worked it out meticulously enough to do so, but I didn't. Um, but I'm quite happy, you know, it's, it's very thematic where they are at the minute. Uh, they've encountered some German resistance, uh, which they were able to push out of the different uh, locations. They have St. Mary Glee. Um, they don't have Carantan yet. Um, but uh, yeah, some 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 sort of some very thematic movements of the U.S. forces and pushing the Germans back. Now, if we look at the British and Allies, on British and Canadians and Allies on this side of the map here, again, let's move around the camera. The, uh, the they were able to take the beaches fairly uh, successfully, to be honest. Um, had a much easier time of it on the dice rolling than the Americans did. Not the Americans, you know, in terms of their stacks anyway, uh, didn't have too many problems. And the British and Canadians are making good on Cairn here, just under these, these stacks here. The Germans 
are reinforcing and um, moving closer to engage and try and push them out, push them back. This will definitely be one of the fiercest bits of fighting in this part of the uh, campaign. No two ways about it. Um, the uh, they were the British were able to take this uh, victory point hex here without any problems at all. Um, there are still some German uh, counters dotted around the map here, which the British will need to take care of. Um, all straightforward. The only kind of thematically, the only sort of counters that didn't really do anything really too much were some of these Brit uh, British counters here, airborne and um, so forth. The Germans uh, ha have started to move up reinforcements. So they've got a bunch of counters. We've got some Volschemjäger here. Um, the 12th SS, I think it is, are uh, here. I'll move around the camera. Uh, yeah, 12th SS are here. And they've got the uh, Tiger counter here. 17th SS are moving up across the across the up, up the map here, just past Filet here. So Germans reinforcing. Uh, it's been a significant amount of combat backwards and forwards between the two forces, but the Allies are looking good in terms of, of certainly good in, in terms of being able to take the beaches successfully and good at being able to move off those beaches and move inland as quickly, thematically anyway, as quickly uh, as you would hope. Um, like I said, I could have probably, I'm sure I could have gamed this a bit better, to be honest, with you, from both sides. But I am playing sort of a very sort of casual game here. Um, you know, sometimes when you're playing solo games, you can activate or, or move some counters and then see how that's worked out and go, actually, if I put them back and do it again, but a different way, it's better. I'm not doing that today. Um, I'm just more interested in playing the sort of the thematic and the narrative of the Normandy campaign. Uh, so that's turn number one done, first one done. Uh, so we'll start turn two, and I, I'm sure I'll double check. I'm sure the weather isn't set for turn two, so I'll, I'll need to I'll just uh, double check that and go through that. There are some looking at the reinforcement stacks. There are some significant reinforcements in turn two, so uh, going to be going to be a busy turn, uh, turn two. I think. Um, yeah, get on with it. At the end of turn number two, so where we're looking at the minute, the Americans have taken Cheborg. Uh, they were able to get a sizable number of units in there. And uh, a good die roll, I'll be honest with you. They weren't quite at three to one. So it's a two to one odds, which is a bit of a, run, a roll of the dice. So they have, um, there has been some American casualties on those units as well. Quite significant, to be honest. A tough nut to crack. Um, however, the Americans on this side of the map are looking pretty good. As I mentioned last time, they, they had taken St. Mary Glee. They still haven't taken Carantan. We're going to move the 82nd Airborne up to Carantan and uh, see if they can uh, take Carantan. And that will open... The, the reason Carantan is important is because it will open that doorway for that major road there. So it will enable the Americans to come out of Cherbourg and move the way south down the map. They also need to keep these doors open here on these routes, which they've sort of, at the minute, they've got. So we're going to need to just do some movement, some juggling around of some of the American units here. Um, I forgot in the American movement turn to move these reinforcements off the beach. So they've obviously been... Uh, you know, lazing about on the beach entrance there. That was my mistake. I need to move those. Um, and that's pretty much it. This sort of side of the map. This, this line here sort of delineates um, between the Americans and the British and their allies on this side of the map. Uh, on this side of the map, so uh, the allies have been able, still been able to, uh, to try and reinforce Cairn. Um, uh, the, they have had some res resistance, um, the Panzer in particular um, has harassed them doggedly, um, which has been problematic for the Allies. Panzer sort of showing their teeth 
And then as I just move around the camera a little bit, the uh, 12th SS Division here, they've also been harassing the Allies and have moved, have actually eliminated a couple of the Allied units as well, a couple of the counters. So even though the Brits have sort of firmed up here, it's not, uh, it's not over by a long shot. Uh, the next turn, looking at the reinforcement stacks, all sides have some reinforcements. So the Americans have a few, not too many. It looks to be quite a sizable number for the, for the British and Allies. And then there's quite a few German uh, counters coming on the next turn. So at the minute, I sort of feel the Allies have made progress, great progress in some regards, um, but it's still on the knife edge. The Germans can, by reinforcing, can just um, hinder them, really, as is the Normandy campaign. It's just about slowing them down through the number of turns. Um, I think, uh, in particular, if the Germans can slow the American progress through the Bocage uh, countryside here, and if the Americans can can slow the, the, the Brits and Allies around Cairn, um, or Khan, depends how you want to pronounce it, that will uh, significantly slow them down there as well. A very engaging game. Um, the rules the rules are, and I'll do a full review. I think after playing this turn, I'm like, I think I should do a full review of the game and talk about the mechanics. The rules are fairly, um, for the most part, sort of fairly medium light, medium, medium complexity, I would say. But the game does move at a brisk pace. And certainly the sort of chit pull activation. So you basically you're pulling a chip to see if the Americans, for example, can do all their movement, or the Americans do their combat, same um, sort of thing for the for the British and Allies, and the Germans, uh, so you're pulling chits to see what, you know, uh, what they will be doing. The Germans also have a, what they call a reaction chit, so the Germans can react to um, every time the Allies, uh, sort of, not every single time, but a numerous number of times in a turn. So, in that turn, for example, on turn number two, the stack was counting the chits, counted one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's like ten different activations, if that is the right term. Um, the Americans had a movement turn, Germans had uh, a couple of moves, um, the Germans had a combat, and the Americans had a combat, and the British uh, allies had a move, and the Germans had several reactions. So. Each turn does take a little time to play because you can active you're activating different you know Germans or British or G Americans whatever, um, which makes the game very solo friendly. Um, but anyway, so I'll stop rabbiting on, and we'll play. I'll play through turn three, and uh, see how that shapes up. As you can see now, the Americans are making really good progress on the last turn. They've been able to start their sort of breakout through Normandy. Uh, we've got a some Americans here. Coutance already. Uh, they need to progress to this hex here though and take the Germans here, take the Germans out here. I, ha I have been using one of the optional rules. Um, I forget what it's called actually. I'll have a quick flip through the rule book as I'm describing. But um, it basically enables you to, during the um, German reaction phase, you can do an emergency withdrawal. And I've done that a couple of times in this game. It's quite a handy rule, when, especially when you're playing solo. You can basically, if some of the German stacks get themselves in a bit of a, a tight spot where they would lose steps as a result of attrition, um, you can, uh, in a German, uh, I think it's a reaction phase, you can just move them a couple of hexes out and you can ignore, there's some limits to what you can and can't do, but you have to move them away from the supply points. Um, and... Um, but I've been using that rule quite extensively, especially in this solo playthrough. Um, so this stack of Germans here have pulled back out of out of harm's way. Uh, really, what the Germans are trying to do is just slow the Allies down. They have more, more, more reinforcements coming onto the board. However, it's saying that so do the Allies. Certainly, this side of the map here looks very clear to the American side. Um, uh, and certainly playing of the Germans that probably haven't done the great job in fairness of defending this side. This middle section I've been able to defend, the Germans have been able to defend, and the same on this section. So we've moved up a couple of these uh, Waffen-SS stacks here 
just just to hold the the British and their allies moving through the map, just to try and hold them hold them back. Um, they have uh, made good here. These this this problematic um, uh, again Waffen SS uh, counters here units here that uh, the British need to take care of. Um, and in the choice of the chit active activation chits, you can choose for the British. You can choose um, here's an example. You can choose basically move or you can choose um, when you put them in move or combat um, there's some again some limits to this and uh, in that particular turn playing those I chose a lot more move than combat um, basically means that the British will be able to get into position um, and hopefully uh, break through out of this area here and start moving through the map uh, at the moment, technically, sort of neck and, you know, not that it's a competition, although obviously during the war it was somewhat. Um, but at the minute they're sort of evenly, although like I said, this door is completely open for the Americans. The British and their allies do not have that same door at the moment. So it's definitely going to be a harder fight than this part of Normandy compared to this part of Normandy. But yeah, really, that was a really engrossing uh, turn, very enjoyable. Uh, so that was turn three. So next turn will be turn number four. Um, not too many reinforcements for turn number four, looking at the reinforcement stack. Um, it's more like six and seven, eight and nine, where a big number, and it, but equally a big number for the Americans as much as for the Germans, as you'd expect, because obviously the Americans, you know, they've got, they've got Cherbourg open, they've got the beaches open, um, the one thing I haven't done yet is I haven't retired the Allied airborne units. Um, I need to check. I think you have to do it really on turn four, he says confidently. I hope it's not turn three, but I think it's turn four. And if it is, I'll retire all the uh, Allied. I think it's Allied airborne units. I think I remember reading down the rules. And the other thing I haven't done anything yet with is the eastern exit uh, box there, which is, you know, sort of an abstraction in some ways. What we'll do there is once the Allies have made good on this side of the map, I'll, I'll push some units off just to represent that. Um, and again, this, this um, I think from memory, I want to be moving the French, and I think it's the Polish, I'm not sure, I'd have to double check. Um, definitely with this game, there are some... Uh, the most part, most of the game is is pretty straightforward and streamlined. But there are some, there are there have been a couple of times where I've, I've had to during the turn just stop playing, just check the rule book a few times. Not unusual for a war game, of course. Um, I try and do that as little as possible in play. I like to do it after I've played through the game and go, oh, I got that wrong. Oh, never mind. Uh, you know, next time make a note of it. But for those specific things that I've I've read about, but I can't remember exactly how those mechanics work, I will double check. Um, probably bef as as I go through probably this turn certainly with removing the airborne I will check and I will just surmise that at the end of the next turn as well but yeah it was a really great turn lots of action quite a bit you know, some combat not too much just maneuvering really um, the, also with this game as well uh, where's the CRT I don't know if you can see, you'll be able to see it on the camera but the CRT is very straightforward not too many columns and you're just moving columns left depending on the circumstances of the cover for the defender it is a single-sided dice game so not a huge number of die rolling involved and actually working out the combat is it's the traditional uh, war game odds uh, combat odds uh, situation uh, very streamlined to be honest with you um but one of the things that is interesting i'll just knock that stack over um one of the things that is interesting is uh the weather effects on movement and combat so for example, the last turn was showers. Uh, yeah, showers. I need to, and there, that's a chip pull for the weather. So you put all the different weather types into a cup and you pull one randomly, and that determines what the weather is. The exception to that is the very first turn. Um, and then, the, the, depending on the weather, it impacts both the movement and the combat. Um, so, showers, for example, uh, there is naval support available. Didn't need it, if I'm being honest. Um, but each allied attack air marker may be used once per turn. So, for example, but whether, for example, if it's sun and cloud, uh, the German units may not use road MP. Um, so basically, you're moving the German units around. They can't move rapidly 
on the on the on the road the red line roads here with their movement allowance um i guess that signifies the sort of in open uh, weather the allied uh, air superiority that they had uh, which is you know which is quite cool a little bit of chrome to the rules i enjoy the, that very much um anyway no further ado i'll play through turn number four and give us some eyes just finished turn number four the americans are making very good on their controlling this part of the map here uh they were able to defeat well basically surround and then defeat the german unit the stacks and we did use uh, one of them did use the withdrawal um i think it's uh this one here uh which uh when playing this game solo i'm i am using that rule for the german uh reaction fay uh activation chips and uh, we have a st American stack down here still, so the Americans are going to make good on their progress through the map. Germans have been able to move up some defences at some key locations, but uh, I think uh, this side of the map is looking very promising, very strong for the American forces. Uh, this side of the map, uh, slower progress for the British and their allies, the Canadians and the British here, for example. Um, but they were able to push out the German uh, 12th SS and the Panzerlehr um, are also looking in a very dicey spot um, under the sort of the, the that sort of rule um, I was unable the Panzerlehr were unable to withdraw so they're looking uh, look like they're going to be uh, taken out of the game captured I would imagine for the most part um, I have removed the British, Air, uh, sorry, the American Airborne, 82nd and 101st. I did check the rule book. It's actually turn five, but uh, providing it's not a storm, and I thought, knowing that the, um, the, everything seems to be going quite well for the Americans, so I thought, why take the chance? So I withdrew them this turn instead. Um, in terms of this side of the map, the Germans are also, they're sort of moving up some of their SS uh, stacks into defensive positions here. Um, the, what the what the German plan is probably going to be is to try and rescue their position by moving this uh, these uh, st counters here down to the, the fillet gap um, and see if they can make a defense there. I think it's going to be very difficult for them. Um, it's just about questioning of um, stalling the, the Allies as much as possible. Looking at the next couple of turns um both sides have some reinforcements not too many the americans have so, definitely some in turn number six um and they have some in five of course but um the british not so much and the germans have some as well so that'll be interesting to see it does feel like the battle the campaign for normandy is being the tone is being set very much by the allies in this playthrough um at this point in the game now what I've done is, I've, because I've done the first four turns, I'll probably um, uh, finish this particular YouTube video for, at this point, and then I'll start the next one at turn number five. Um, it'll give me a chance to edit all the clips and sort all the files out and things like that. So I'm gonna do this over two YouTube videos. Um, so I'll publish the first, publish this one, and then uh, once I've uh, been through and filmed and played through the rest of the game, I'll then publish the second one. Uh, but yes, yeah, so far, extremely enjoyable and very engrossing game. It is uh, a fairly fast paced game once you get your head through all, like all war games, you get your head around some of the rules and some of the nuances of some of the rules. Um, certainly, if I look back at the first four turns, I'll be honest, I don't think I've played either side to, the, to their best ability by a long shot. But I've enjoyed it, and that's kind of all that matters. And, and, and you know, when you're playing the games solo like this, um, incredibly enjoyable. Um, I feel like um, there were a couple of key sort of uh, dice rolls that just didn't go, and you know, went, went strongly in favour of the Allies. If I'm being honest, um, they were able to get their units off the beaches fairly straightforward. They were able to push in fairly straightforward. The last time I played, looking at my notes, that was not the case. But in this case. It's uh, been, it's, it's gone. Um, I can't remember last time I played, I didn't make a note of it, which is a little bit annoying of myself. I can't remember when they managed to sort of get past 
this part of the map on the British side. The Americans have always found have been able to dominate and control pretty much up to this point, and then it's a bit of a slog, can be a bit of a slog through all the blockage um, and locations. But we'll see over the next few turns. Looking very much looking forward to uh, playing through and finishing the game. I definitely will play through and uh, keep playing until I feel it's decide completely decided. But even just for the sort of the fun of playing through the game and seeing if the seeing basically what can the Germans do just to try and slow the Allies down? Is there anything they can do um, uh, just to see if they can do that? They, they both sides do have significant amount of reinforcements yet through the game, so you know, uh, looking forward to playing that. But uh, thanks a lot for checking this video out. Like I said, there will be a part two where I'll play through turns five through two and including ten, and then do a surmise at the end. Thank you, as always.